What's up all my dope creators, my name is T. Odom, and with Thanksgiving around the corner, I wanted to paint a picture of food. The food in particular is related to the native tribe that I'm actually related to, who which are called the Tona Odom, and the food that's shown here are mainly crops and um, food that's found in nature that they found. Also a little known fact, the name of the tribe, Tohono Odom, is what actually inspired my name, T. Odom. Just a little fun fact there for you. So throughout the video, I'm just going to be telling you about the kind of food that I'm painting and sort of my process on how I painted each and every one of them. So the big pumpkin looking fruit is actually a variety of squash called Veracruz Pepita. It's mainly harvested for seeds and it's not really known if the inside of the fruit is actually edible. But what's really interesting is that it has these really interesting looking um, green sort of ripples going down the fruit. And with the green I used a mix of sap green and ultramarine blue just to get some of the darker shades in there. And as far as the shading on the actual white, I used a mix of blue with black and white to mix with gray, so I kind of get like a little bit of a like grayish blue. And on the stem of it, I mainly just used like a mix of like red and green to mix into a brown, but I also used a mix of uh, Van Dyke brown to get some of that darker shading on the right side and on the top. I also used cadmium yellow and a mix of like a turquoise green to get the lighter shade of green on the very first layer. The corn was probably my favorite part to paint out of this whole entire painting. And originally I was scared to do this because I have never actually painted corn before, but it actually turned out to be one of my favorite things to paint and I really loved how it turned out. So essentially what I did was I layered a thin layer of water and then I painted a small thin wash of cadmium yellow. And then after that, I went in with a wet brush and I wiped off some of the paint to add highlights. And for the darker areas, I mixed in a little bit of Van Dyke Brown to um, paint in some of the ripples to make the um, corn pop out a little bit more and I just added it on from there. The two fruits on the bottom left are actually um, cactus fruit. The one on the left is from the saguaro cactus, which is I think the biggest known cactus species to ever been found. And the one on the right is an organ pipe cactus fruit. And the organ pipe cactus kind of looks like this um, big spindly cactus with like different little um, arms coming out of the ground. It's actually a wicked looking thing. These are actually really important because the Tohna Odom would actually go out and actually search for fruits and this is actually really sacred to them and I think they even hold some festivals as far as like um, the start of harvesting these fruits or like the start of the season of when these fruits can get harvested. So with those fruits I used a mix of turquoise green, um, ultramarine blue, uh, alizarin crimson, and I used some of those colors to actually make a purple because with the organ pipe cactus fruit the outside looks like it has a mix of like a darker green but it also has like a bit of purple mixed into it too and the saguaro uh, cactus fruit um, from the reference photos that I looked at it looked like it had sort of a lime-ish green on the inside sort of next to the um, the red fruit that's inside. Another interesting fact too about these fruits is that um, with them you can actually make jams and even the Tahona Odom have actually made wine out of these fruits too which is really interesting. Another big crop too in here are the beans. 
which is one of the most widely grown crops in a lot of native tribes as well. So there are two varieties of beans in here. So the first one, which is the um, darker looking ones, are actually a sort of bean variety that the Odom have actually cultivated and grown and sort of made themselves. From what I looked up, they are called Papago peas, but they also kind of look like they represent a sort of black-eyed pea. Except with a black-eyed pea, um, the dark circle mostly centers around the dot that's connected to the pod that it grows in. And with these, they're sort of... The, the dark part is actually sort of... It kind of consumes the the almost the entire bean itself. And with the second variety of bean, it's called a blue speckled tapari. I think that's how you pronounce it, tapari. And it's these really um, beautiful looking beans that have these really um, these sort of vivid blue looking speckles on them. And in this painting, I think I may have popped the blue out just a little too much because the blue from the reference photos that I looked at aren't as bright and saturated as they appear but I think from this point of view they ac it actually makes everything look a little bit more pretty. Now the antlers in the picture represent the meat that they hunted for. The antler on the right is an antler that belongs to the white-tailed deer which is of course the most common deer in the United States. You know, you see them off on the side of the road, hopping across the road, and yeah, they're they're not hard to miss. The antler on the left is actually one that belongs to the pronghorn antelope, which is the only antelope species that's native to the United States, and they hunted for those pretty frequently too. Although I'm not sure if they still hunt for them as well, I'm not really too sure about the hunting regulations within the reservation, or anywhere else in Arizona as well. I do know that they still hunt for white-tailed white deer, and I think they also hunt the deer for another festival as well. I don't remember exactly which one though. So with the antlers, I pretty much use the same kind of colors, um, a little bit of uh, Van Dyke Brown, and for the first layer I used a mix of Van Dyke Brown with orange. Um, I started with a little light wash and then I just built up the thickness of the paint from there. And with the darker shades of brown, I used just regular Van Dyke brown. And then I used ultramarine blue to make the brown darker for the darker shades as well. The final part of this piece that I painted was the background. Now the background I wanted to do sort of a sunset looking background, so I just looked up reference photos of sunsets in the desert, which are very beautiful by the way. Um, the desert probably has some of the most beautiful sunsets that you will ever see. I personally never been to a desert and I've never seen a sunset in the desert personally before, but man do I want to. And this is unfortunately where I've had the most trouble. See, the thing is, it started off really well. I did a wet-on-wet -wet technique where I would lay down a layer of water 
And then as for the colors, I used ultramarine blue, and then I mixed alizarin crimson with the blue to make a purple, and the very bottom I just used a regular orange. Now the first layer went on really well. The second layer though wasn't really all that well. See, I didn't wet the canvas a second time, so then the paint sort of dried up really quickly and it wasn't blending as well as I wanted it to. And I was trying to figure out how to fix it, and we all go through this when we think, oh, it's going to be good straight through, there's going to be no mistakes. Wrong, sir. <laughs> oh man, this part drove me nuts. Eventually I found a way around it, and the great thing about watercolor is that even if you make a tiny little mistake, there's still a way to make it work for you. And it eventually got to a point where I blended the colors really well, and I was eventually happy with the final piece. Overall, this piece was really fun to paint. It was great to paint something that was sort of personal to me, and that sort of tied in with my... Um, genetic roots. Um, it's really great to just paint something that that really means so much to me. And again, with Thanksgiving around the corner, I just really wanted to I wanted to do something with food because who doesn't love food? So I really hope you all enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and turn on that notification bell just so that you know when I upload a video. And until next time, stay creative, my dudes.